everyone hope all of you are doing great welcome back to yet another smart contract tutorial in this video we're going to build a smart contract for crowdfunding in the last video we had built a smart contract for a stock trading so if you haven't watched i'll link in the i button in the description so you guys can follow that and make sure to access the playlist complete playlist because in that close to 70 smart contract so let's start writing the smart contract for a crowdfunding and if you guys really want me to build a project on the smart contract do let me know in the comment section that you guys want a project in the smart contract so i can build the project where we're going to include all the funded materials and we're going to interact with the this crowdfunding smart contract so let's start the writing the smart contract so let me give this comment crowdfunding because this is what we're going to build in this tutorial and uh, let me provide the license identifier then let me give the pragma sorority version you're going to take it 8.0 and we have to call the contract we're going to give the name crowdfunding you can give whatever name you want and in that we have to define all the variables all the state variable we want to take in our contract so let's define that we'll take the address and it's going to be the creator because whoever will create this contract we're going to store his address so that you can call it owner you can call it creator it's totally up to you so we have the creator address now we have to take the goal that what amount of money we want to reach through the smart contract so that's goal we're going to define we're going to take uh, another variable this will become the deadline that what is the deadline time now we have to take this mapping and it's going to return unt and it will return the contributor so that those who will contribute the fund into this contract and uh, we're going to pass the address and it's going to return the amount which they have contributed in the contract so this is the first mapping now we have to define uh, what amount we have raised so far so total contributions now let's come here here we go define the boolean value we'll say if funded funded and we're going to define another boolean it will keep the track of completed so these are the state variable we're going to define in the funding contract let's come here and we have to initialize the events so gold rich event we have now we have to initialize one more event which is called fund transfer so we have to pass the backer and the amount and we have to initialize one more which is the deadline reach in that we're going to pass the total contribution you can take as many data as you want but here i'm going in a simple approach so you guys can understand that what we are doing exactly so these are the event we have now let's we have defined the constructor because we have to fill out all the data we have defined above so first thing we have to define the funding goal that what is the goal for this contract that how much fund we want to get from this contract so that's what we're going to define then we have to define the duration it's going to be in minute you can take in hour you can take it week but most of the contract you will find that's happen mostly in one month or a week but here i'm going with a duration so this is our constructor in that we have to simply update all of the data so creator is going to be the message dot sender the one who's deploying the contract now the second thing we have to update the amount the goal that how much we want to raise and here we're going to define that we want to raise ether not way so we have to define the currency in terms of way now we have to initialize the deadline so we are going with the duration minutes and it's going to be a one minute so whatever the block time stand so when we are deploying the contract that time we're going to add the duration and the duration we're going to pass inside the constructor and we're going to multiply with one minute so it will convert into a minute so that's how we can convert the time in minute not in second because this timestamp you will get in terms of second in millisecond and that's how we are converting so that's what we have here now let's take this is funded it's going to be a false because the goal is not completed and now the last one is going to be completed is going to be false so when we raise the fund we're going to turn this is completed to true that means we have raised that fund so these are the constructor we have now we have to define the functions so let's define the very first function this is going to be a modifier because we want to restrict certain functions certain variable to be accessed only by owner of the contract we don't allow to access anybody else so let's define the modifier only creator and that we're going to make this check required so message dot sender is going to be the creator otherwise we have to throw this error message that creator can call this function and we have to provide this so this is the modifier now we have to define the function so the very first function we want to define is this contribute so this is going to be a public anybody can call this function and contribute the fund into the contract so we'll say public payable and here we have to simply play with the data so first thing we have to do is to make the check so required is going to block timestamp so we have to check the when the user is calling this function at that point of time the deadline is not over 
so it's inside the deadline means the contract is still receiving fund so we have to make the check for that so funding period has ended and now we have to do the second check check the status of the crown funding so it's already completed so if it's full that means it's not completed but if it's true that means it's completed and we have to throw this error message so that's the second check we have and now we have to do hit the let's come here we have to take a variable called contributions and we're going to simply update the value so if the user who is calling this function pass these two conditions then we have to simply update the value so this contribution is the array mapping sorry and then we are simply updating his data the amount he's providing so that looks fine to me now let's do the contribution message.send is going to be the contribution we are simply updating the data now we have to simply update the amount into the total contributions the total fund is getting deposited inside the contract so that's how we can do it so once we're done with that now we'll simply come here we'll say if total contribution is greater or equal to the goal amount in that context the thing we have to do is we'll say if funded is going to be true so if we met the exact goal we want to achieve from the contract the amount we want to raise then we have to raise this if funded to true and we'll call this event so goal rich total contribution hope so far things are making sense to all of you guys that what we have done so this is the if statement we have now let's come here now we have to initialize this event fund transfer message dot sender to contributions that looks pretty fine so this is the very first function which allow us to contribute the fund in the contract now let's write other function we'll say contribute withdraw fund public so this function we're going to restrict only for the owner so the one who created the contract he can only withdraw the fund not anybody else so we'll say that we'll make the condition we'll say is funded goal has not been rich so if the goal the amount we want to raise from this fund is not reached and that's what we are checking with this condition is funded if it's false that means we haven't reached the goal but if it's true then we have reached the goal so if it's true then only we want to allow creator to withdraw the fund otherwise we want we don't want him to withdraw the fund the half goal fund okay so that's the check we are doing now come here we're going to make another check we have to check for the completed conditions so is already completed so that looks fine here now let's call this to true because it's completed and now we're going to simply transfer the fund to the creator we have to update on his address so that's the video function we have now let's come here here we're going to write a get refund function so anybody can call and they can get the refund so we'll write the function for that so first thing we have to do is to make the check so we have to check for the timestamp so the the way this contract work that they can only withdraw the fund during the time period once the time period is got over they can't withdraw the fund so that's why we are making the check so funding period has not ended then we have to do the second check we have to check for the condition goal has been reached after that they cannot withdraw that then we have to simply do the third check that whether they have any fund in the contract or not if they have then we have to allow them to withdraw otherwise we want to restrict them so that looks fine these are the three check we are doing now let's simply come down here and here we're going to simply take the contributions we'll try to find out the user and and his contribution into the contract so if it's zero equal to zero and we are going to simply subtract the contribution from him and then we're going to transfer the fund so here you have noticed one thing that at the end we are transferring the fund because we don't want to leave any opportunity for re-entrancy attack so that's why we have first updated his balance then we are transferring the fund and in the DAO attack what happened they first transferred the fund and then they updated the user balance and in this way they allowed re-entrancy attack so here we are updating the balance of the user then we are transferring the fund so that's the thing you have to keep in mind so that looks pretty fine now we have to initialize the event for the transfer event we have message.sender and the contributions and this is the video function now we have to create one more function to get the current balance so we need to have a function which allows us to know that what amount of fund we have raised in the contract in the form so that's what we're going to do it public view return so anybody can call this function and here we have to simply return the balance of the address 
so that looks pretty fine let's come here we have to create one more function we'll say extended deadline so if we want to extend the deadline so after initializing this contract the creator realized that i want to allow more allow, i want to allow user to deposit the fund for a uh, x number of days increasing the time so we need to provide that as well so only creator only owner of the contract can do and we're going to simply update the deadline so this is the entire smart contract we have written hope so far things make sense to all of you guys and now let's test this out we have written into our contract we have all of these variables we have defined we have this event we have our constructor we have the modifier we have the contribution function we have the withdrawal function we have the get refund we have the current balance and extend deadline so all of this function we have written in the smart contract now let's test this out so let's click on this and here you can see this is the contract i have and this is the account which i'm going to use for deploying the contract the very first one but in this we have to pass this two data so what we have to pass in the constructor we have to pass the amount we want to raise from this contract and we have to initialize the time so what amount i want to raise i want to raise let's say 50 less amount and the time i want to define is let's say uh, 100 100 minutes now click on this transaction the transaction went through you can see the transaction went through if you come here and here we have the install of the contract so let's do one thing let's me remove this one. Oh, actually it will remove all the contracts so let's deploy one more time click on this deploy and here we have the install of the contract we have deployed the contract you can see we don't have any fund into the contract and now we can withdraw sorry we can contribute that so if you come here and you can able to check all of these variables that current the balance we have in the contract it's zero it's false false the goal we want to raise this much ether we want to take the current balance is zero deadline is this much which is equivalent to one and a half hour this is the creator address and if you can pass the address of the contributor you can able to find his balance this is the withdrawal function refund and we have the extended deadline and this is the contribution function so now what i will do i'll come here i'll go back to the second account the user and in that i'm going to deposit the fund so make sure you have to deposit in terms of way eh, sorry in ether not way you can but what we have defined it's ether so this looks fine now click on this contribute you can see the transaction went through and we have five ether in our function in our contract so this user have deposit five ether now let's do go back to the another account this time i want to deposit close to 66 that's a lot of money so what i will do i click on this contribute and we have a lot of ether into this contract so if i come here if i simply grab the address of the user i can paste here and i can able to find his contribution into this contract now if anybody if the user calls this function get refund they can because we are still into the contract is ongoing so they can withdraw the fund as long as the contract is going on it's not finished so they can withdraw the fund but if someone will call this withdraw function it will throw an error because this function is only restricted to the creator so if i call this withdraw it will throw me an error because i'm not the owner so let's do one thing let's try to withdraw the fund and right now you can see that i have 99 but the moment i will withdraw it will have a lot of ether so let's come here and let's click on this withdraw fund the transaction went through right now we have zero ether into this contract and my wallet has a lot of ether if if i would have that much ether in my real ether in my wallet i would have a huge money <laughs> so i hope this entire thing makes sense to all of you guys and you guys know how to write the smart contract for a crowdfunding and if you really want me to build a project on this you want me to create a front end where i allow user to come and donate and be a part of this crowdfunding then do let me know in the comment sections and do let me know that what are the technology you guys should want me to include when we're going to build this project and where allow user to interact with okay so do let me know all the things which you guys want me to suggest and if you guys are really interested on the project then do let me know in the comment section then definitely i will build that one so that's the only thing i want to talk about in this video and make sure to access the complete playlist because in that we're going to push close to 70 plus smart contract that's going to be from different industry and that will give you a better idea that how you can write a better smart contract more secure smart contract for a different smart industry so hope this entire thing makes sense if you are still into my new to my channel give a like and subscribe to my channel to let me know in the comment section what you thought about the tutorial and if you have any recommendation for me accounting my teachings about my pronunciations and the topic which i'm covering do let me know your thoughts in that as well have a wonderful day bye bye